So you click on this video because you probably just started running or you might be thinking about started running um, and you're just thinking, well, it's easy, right? I just put the trainers on, t-shirt, shorts and off you go. And pretty much, yes, but there are some things that I wish I knew before I started my running journey and that's why I'm going to share with you the six things that I wish that I knew before I started running and I'll be honest with you and I'll be very direct. Some things that I will show you might be a little bit gross but you have to see them because obviously then you will realize okay now I understand what she's talking about so don't complain that I didn't warn you. So right now let's go to the main video. So let's start with talking about poo. And you will be like, Max, come on, there are better subjects to talk about. And I agree with you. However, when I started running and I started increasing my mileage, I started thinking, well, okay, what if I want a poo? Where will I go? Where will be my next toilet? Where will be my next step? And I started researching the YouTube um, topics about that and I couldn't find anything and I was a little bit frustrated. <laughs> You know what? That's why I'm starting from this subject. So on the beginning while you're running, it's just a few kilometers, probably you won't have that problem because you just go on the road or on the trail quickly, come back home and then sort it. You've got the toilet. But when you start increasing your mileage, um, well, you will face the problem, especially when you start running on the trails, there is no toilet around. And what do you do? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. So I'll tell you the secret. You just go on the side. So you find the bush, you are in the woods, so definitely you find some sites where you can simply do a poo. I really need to poo. <laughs> <laughs> like we used to have done it like hundreds, two hundreds, three hundreds years ago and there was no problem. And you will, on the beginning, you will feel very uncomfortable doing it because you will be like, is someone watching me? Will someone just pass through while I'm pooing? I always feel like somebody's watching me. And this happened to me, but as the time went on, you know what, right now, I don't give literally a shit if someone noticed me. When I need to go, I need to go. My body is talking and there is no way of stopping it. Right now, you know what? It's time for me to go. So don't feel embarrassed that you have to go on the side. It's a normal thing for us ultra runners that we do. Just a one tip, just make sure that you always got a lot of the toilet paper with you in your running vest. Okay, so let's go to the next thing. So it's the amount of washing that you will have. So you may think, well, okay, it's only a short t-shirt and socks, right? Um, yes, if you're living in the sunny country. However, I live in UK where majority of the year, the weather is crap. It's raining, it's not very hot. It's majority of the time it's cold. So I need to have layer base, base layers, and it's just like hoodies and all that stuff. And then especially during the winter. So in the winters, you'll see how much washing you will have. And then during the summer, it's not too bad, you know, to dry them off. But during the winter, it's just like crazy. It takes ages to dry them off. And yeah, you can use the tampon dryer to speed that up the process. However, I don't want to get my things damaged. So I like to dry them naturally. So yeah, I didn't realize how much washing will I have to have after each run, especially during the winter time. Okay, so that amount of washing leads us to another subject about the running equipment. And you're just thinking, well, I just need a trainer, shorts and t-shirts. What are you talking about? On the beginning, yes. However, you quickly see that the trainers, your gym trainers perhaps, they're not suitable for the running, especially on the trails. So you'll be thinking, well, you know what? I need to have a new pair of shoes. And that can cost around 100 pounds just for the normal shoes. 
um, and it can go quickly to 200 and even more and then you would be running in the miserable weather you know rain and all that stuff and you'll be thinking well I need to protect myself a little bit so I want a waterproof jacket and this one the waterproof jacket will start somewhere around 100 pounds as well and it can go to 300 400 pounds and I'm like bloody hell how expensive it can get and you may think well I don't need that stuff because I'm just doing the few kilometers that's fine but if you start thinking about running ultra marathons and if you start thinking about participating into the races some races they've got a pretty tough requirements in terms of your running equipment so you can spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on this one and when I started running I didn't think that I would buy the shoes that cost me hundred pounds or like jacket hundred pounds plus and for some people it's just nothing but for me when I never spent on my gym trainers like more than 30 pounds I was like what okay so from the cost of the equipment let's talk about our own body so on the beginning I warn you that some things might be gross so we're going into this part so let's talk about your feet and especially um, about your toenails so basically let me take my socks off and don't worry I took the shower this morning so they're not smelly or anything but they're not as pretty as they used to be because when you start running more and more your toenails will start um, going away you will drop them um, you will lose them simple as that so like this one for example it's moving it will go um, this one's got a funny shape um, and it's normal it happens you will have plenty of blisters after running on the trails in the mountains and it's nothing new you just pop them and that's it clear obviously you know care about your food so it doesn't happen very often but it will happen at some point and like this one that was a funny shape and I lost it a few times but look it came back normal so be warned that you may have some problems with your feet this thing that I'm going to talk about is really really pissing me off and it's I'm being chased by dogs and normally majority I would say 80% of the um, dog walkers they're pretty fine you know they're good they say morning they're chatting to you the dogs are well trained but that 20% is just gets you because they're not trained they do whatever they want and then as you run they just like chase you they want to play um, they you know bark at you and everything and then when I'm running I'm in my zone and quite often I'm just like switched off and then when the dogs just jump on me I'm just like shit just leave me alone <laughs> leave me alone ah! no, I don't want to play with you right now and I know it may have you know it may sound harsh but in that moment it's my time leave me alone I don't want to play with you you know go to your owner and they play with him with her and you know what it's not a dog fault that you know he she wants to play but it's rather that human that dog owner that can't train it and then you know for me if I'm a dog walker and I know my dog is jumpy I don't go into the public you know places without keeping them on the leash I keep them close to myself um, because I know it can jump on the people and it may scare people <coughs> even though I know he's friendly or she's friendly that other person doesn't know so it's also the message for the dog walker keep your dogs on the leash all the time um, and especially when I'm running around because it's pissing me off so yeah so you will see that many dogs will chase you and there is nothing you can do with that unless you give some chat back to the dog owner so we've got so many things so right now we're going into the last things and it's high emotion and when you start running probably you won't notice this one but when you increase the mileage quite often you'll see you will notice a mixture of the emotions sometimes it will be like you will be really annoyed sometimes you'll be like 
completely in your zone and sometimes you'll be like crying and it will come from nowhere and it's especially during the races like one minute everything is good you know you're running all happy and the next minute he's just crying and he's just like oh i don't want to do it anymore i want to go back and it happens yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it happened plenty of times to me when I was crying like a baby but in the end you know what it's worth it and those high emotions you touch so many different points um, that it will change you for life that's all for today all those six things and I tell you what even if I had known about them before I started running, I still would start running because it's such a great sport. You'll experience so many emotions, you will meet so many great people. So don't let those small things, those small inconveniences stop you from running. And actually, I'm going to do another video about the positive things about the running, so definitely stay tuned. But right now, you know the drill, there is a magic button called subscribe and the funny one thumbs up so press them both to help me grow and definitely to spread the message to all those people who's just starting their incredible running journey but right now peace out <laughs>